Hi and welcome to another video. Uh, this time you'll see I've got my camera on, so uh, this is the first time many of you, any of you, will have seen me, I imagine. Um, but there's a reason for the, having the camera on today, and that is because I have something that I actually want to show you, which would have been quite difficult um, in um, well doing it via pictures or something like that. So the purpose of this video is to show you about um, Home Assistant integration with um, some smart plugs that I've recently found are probably well behind the curve with many of you out there um, that have been using these things for years. But um, I started thinking about how I could improve my home automation to basically stop um, my storage batteries from discharging um, overnight if I was to run my washing machine or dishwasher overnight because I'd want them to run um, from the grid during the off peak hours. So just a quick recap, uh, my grid power tariff is an economy seven tariff, which means that I get seven hours of discounted grid power between half midnight and half seven in the morning. That's on UTC time. Uh, now we're on summer time, it's between half one and half eight in the morning. But basically, yeah, there's, there's seven hours a day of um, cheap rate electricity. Uh, the flip side of that is outside of those hours, electricity is really expensive um, for me. So I try and do, uh, make sure my storage batteries are charged um, overnight during that period if I need them, if my solar panels aren't going to do anything. And also if I've got any, um, you know, heavy appliance usage, then I'll do that during that time as well. So things like dishwasher and a washing machine, um, if they run overnight, I want to, you know, I want to make sure I run during that that off peak time. And I also want to make sure that they're using power from the grid rather than um, power from uh, from my batteries. Because what I want to do is get to eight o'clock in the morning and um, find that I flatten my batteries by running the dishwasher or the washing machine. So I was thinking about how I could could do that. And you know, the, the easiest solution for me seemed to be to use uh, an energy monitor plug where I could see if the um, if the um, if the power was over a certain threshold, then I could tell my inverter to um, basically turn the battery off. So I did a little bit of research um, in terms of what energy monitor plugs were out there. Um, it took me a little while to decide what to get. Some of them um, aren't compatible with sort of heavy current appliances, so you need to make sure that you get one that can supply a full 13 amps. Some of them say they're not suitable for dishwashers or washing machines or anything like that. Um, I was literally about to buy the D-Link um, energy monitor plugs, but then I found that actually you can only use the D-Link ones with D-Link's own software. Um, they're not um, sort of open source. They can't integrate into Home Assistant or anything like that. So although they're really cheap, I think they're about £8 each, um, they're actually quite limited in what functionality you can get. Uh, so, yeah, doing a bit of research, I found that there was um, these Tasmota um, or Tas yeah, Tasmata um, sockets, and there's a company called Local Bytes that sell them. Um, there we go. Um, I'm not being paid to advertise these or anything like that. Um, I think they're about 12 99 each plus postage. So I thought I would um, buy a couple of them and see how I got on and see how easy they are to use. So I yeah, ordered a couple of these things. Um, they are really straightforward to set up. Uh, literally, you plug it in. Um, the plug itself um, has its own Wi-Fi access point in it. Um, so literally off your phone or your laptop, you attach to that um, local Wi-Fi network. The first thing it asks you is what your actual home Wi-Fi network is. And once you've done that, um, it will then uh, tell you what IP address it's picked up from um, from your home network and you can then browse to that and complete the rest of your configuration. So if I just minimize me a moment, um, I need to work out how to do that. Sorry, a moment. How do I get me out of the way? Okay, let's just drag me down to the corner for a second. So um, yeah, once you've done the, the basic configuration um, of attaching it to your wireless network, you'll then be able to browse to it from your um, from your home network. And this is the home screen um, that you, you, you know, you'll be presented with. 
Uh, the configuration is very, very simple. Um, literally, there's a configuration button. And in there, um, you can configure the Wi-Fi if you need to. Um, the key thing um, to configure is MQTT. So MQTT is um, how it's going to talk back to Home Assistant. Those that have watched previous videos um, will know that I'm already using MQTT to speak to my inverter. So um, I didn't actually have to do very much there. Um, literally, the, the Mosquito MQTT broker is already installed in my Home Assistant. I'll show you that in a moment. Um, if we just look in here, all we're going to tell it is um, the IP address of my Home Assistant, um, what my MQTT user and password is. Fortunately, that's cleared out. Um, and that's, that's about it. Um, if we go back to configuration, the other thing I would do is configure the host name of um, the device. So that will be then what it appears as in Home Assistant, which I think is under module. No, it's not. Is it under other? There we go, device name and friendly name. So this is the socket that's associated with my dishwasher. And there we go, so I'll just call it dishwasher. Um, nothing too exciting going on there. So in Home Assistant, within settings, we'll go to, um, first of all, we need to add the integration for Tasmota, which is there. So you'd add that integration in the normal way. We can see now that I've got five devices and a hundred entities. So each device has 20 entities. Um, if we have a look in here, there's, we can see I've got, um, so since buying those initial couple of uh, devices, I, I've ended up buying three more. Um, just as a side note, one of them ended up being faulty um, and I was sent out another one right away. So I was really impressed with the, with the customer service. But as I say, I'm not on the payroll for them. I've just had a really good experience. Um, so I thought I would share that with you. So we can see that, yeah, I've got five of these uh, devices now. So the ones I'm going to talk about today are basically the dishwasher and washing machine. They're doing the, um, the same thing in that when they are um, when the energy monitor feature of the of the plug detects that those devices are running it will um, stop um, using battery uh, battery power from my my storage batteries and it will pull power from the grid so if we were to um, take take a look at that so i mean literally what will happen when you first configure one of these is as soon as you've put your MQTT information in here, Home Assistant will pick up the device and it will appear as a new device within your um, within your settings in, in devices. So I was really pleased how, um, how straightforward that was. Um, if you, um, you know, if you're feeling keen, if you go into developer tools, we can go into states, if I do a filter on dishwasher, we can see all of the um, all of the entities associated with that dishwasher socket at the moment. So, you know, right now I know my dishwasher is not running. Um, I did run it overnight, um, and we can see that it used 1.2 uh, kilowatts of power. Um, we can see that over the time I've had it, I must have run it, I'm guessing, 20 odd times because I've used 26 kilowatts of power. We can see the voltage, um, so on. We can see what happens uh, when it powers on. We can see my Wi-Fi connectivity and, and so on. And that will happen as soon as you put that MQTT information into the uh, into the GUI for your um, for your socket. So that's um, say so that's really straightforward to, to see. Um, so the next step is to configure our automations to make use of of that information. Um, it's so this was pretty straightforward for me. So because we've already done all the legwork, um, we've already got our MQTT broker running, we've already got various other automations running. So the automation um, and the script, which I have to limit my battery discharging already existed. So I'm just um, making use of that, of that functionality that I already have. So if I literally um, find the automation, so I've got quite a few here. It's uh, 
Where are we? Probably all shouting. Um, here we go. So here's my automation. Called it Eco7. Use grid power when the dishwasher runs overnight. Oh, we can see it around 11 hours ago. So that was um, earlier this morning. And literally, here we go. So when um, my dishwasher energy is above five watts, because when I've got the timer set on the dishwasher, it uses about three watts just with the LEDs on. Um, so as soon as it goes over five watts and the time is between midnight 35 and 0728 UTC, uh, in my previous video, I've explained about um, daylight savings and how we can work around that by getting everything to run on, on UTC. My energy supplier, um, Octopus, they don't um, they don't change my uh, my tariff for daylight savings, so it's a it's a constant um, midnight 30 to 0730 UTC 12 months of the year. So I've updated all of my home assistant automations to run on UTC. Uh, based on that, so literally we can see, um, you know, as soon as the dishwasher goes above five watts. Um, and the time is between midnight 35 and 728 in the morning UTC then I limit my battery discharge to one amp and we can have a look at a trace if you like and we'll see that this morning this actually yeah this ran at 251 um, we can see that the template condition was met and uh, the, the script ran to, to limit that um, if we're feeling particularly interested, I was quite yeah quite excited about this when I first put these in. So I put these little appliance monitor uh, gauges on my on my dashboard. We can see that this morning um, my uh, my dishwasher fired up at 2:55 in the morning. I'm not quite sure how the dishwasher uh, uses its power, but I seem to get this double spike um, sort of output when it when it runs. I'm imagining it's uh, the water heat cycle is is what's um, what's causing those spikes, but there we go. So um, so yeah, it's really easy to to set up and integrate um, these these plugs in. Uh, so since since initially just getting a couple for the dishwasher and washing machine, um, I've bought uh, three more. I've got uh, one on a lamp in the lounge, which literally turns on at um, at sunset, and the value of sunset is driven by um, home assistant so that's you know very very easy um, and another one that turns my my fish tank uh, light on an hour before sunset um, and again it was super easy to set those up because all of the um, all of the legwork is is done already um, one last thing I will I will quickly show you which I think is quite cool um, if you go into uh, settings and your devices within the um, uh, no, sorry, it's developer tool and states. Sorry, um, you get a switch um, associated with each of your new sockets, so you can see whether it's turned on or off, and you can turn it on and off as well if you wanted to uh, from here, or you can add the switch to the dashboard. So, uh, on my phone, um, on the display for my phone, I do have. Um, well, in fact, do I have it on? Might be on this dashboard too. Yeah, here we go. So I've um, I've added some switches for um, turning the lounge lamp or the fish tank lamp on and off, literally from Home Assistant. It's just a little bit of fun. Um, you have to be pretty lazy not to go over and flick the switch yourself. But um, you know, it's um, it's all good and it's um, yeah, it's uh, it's good fun to to get that working. So anyway, yeah, hope you found this interesting. Um, Hope that my, my image hasn't offended too many people. So, um, yeah, feel free to, to make a comment. Um, if I can help you with anything, I will do. Thanks very much. Bye.